Before I begin the presentation, I'd like to provide some brief background about Marquette University. It is a Jesuit university that was founded in 1881. It is located in downtown Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Marquette's enrollment is more than 8,300 undergraduates and 3,400 graduate and professional studies students. Desire to Learn, or D2L, has been Marquette's learning management system since 2004. Marquette doesn't offer many fully online degree programs. However, hybrid teaching is becoming more popular amongst our faculty, and a lot of online summer courses are offered, which are very popular amongst students. In this presentation, I'll provide a brief explanation of what SCORM is, describe the pilot program that utilized Desire to Learn and SCORM, demonstrate how this tandem worked in practice, and explore what was learned and what our next steps will be. SCORM stands for Shareable Content Object Reference Model. It was started in 1999 by the Department of Defense to help standardize e-learning across both federal and private sectors. It is simply a set of standards that allow learning management systems and content developers to communicate with each other. Instructional designer Laura Shears shows a good analogy of SCORM with this graphic. A company that makes toasters makes sure that their plugs fit into electrical outlets. The toaster itself would be the learning object, or more specifically, the shareable content object, or SCO. The plug would be like the JavaScript that communicates with the outlet or application program interface. The power company or LMS is in charge of the outlet's application program interface, and the content developer is in charge of the JavaScript. As the owner of the toaster or the purchaser of a SCO, you expect that if you move or change LMSs, your toaster or SCO will still work in the new environment. From my experience, this is the case in practice. It truly is right once, run anywhere technology. The pilot program I will discuss took place in Marquette's first year English program. First Year English, or FYE, is taken by almost all incoming freshmen. To give you some numbers, in fall of 2013, Marquette's freshman enrollment was 1,989 students, and 1,555 of those students took First Year English. Some freshmen test out of the course, and there are special sections for honors and ESL students, so that is why there is a discrepancy in the numbers. There are a total of 81 sections of First Year English in 2013, and it is by far the biggest instruction client for the library. It is also an opportunity for the library to connect with new students and show them the value of the library and its resources. The course provides students their first exposure to academic research and academic writing and is taught mostly by English graduate students. There are three units in the course and Unit 2 is when the sections come to the library for their information literacy session which is meant to help them complete their Unit 2 assignment, shown here, which requires them to write an essay using a surprise reversal thesis on a global health topic. In addition to scholarly sources, the essay also requires one source from a non-North American publication. The information literacy session has traditionally been conducted as a one-shot 50 to 75 minute librarian lecture followed by an in-class topic search activity. These one-shot one sessions present challenges as there is not a lot of librarian interaction before or after sessions. Like the photo of this bullseye in a dartboard, a one-shot instruction, instruction session requires the librarian to throw a bullseye with one dart. This pilot program was made possible in part due to the following reasons. First, there was change in the leadership of the first year English program on both the English department and library sides. The English faculty member who had been the longtime director of the first year English program retired, and the library had also recently hired a new English librarian who was appointed the library liaison to the first year English program. Both individuals saw this transition period as an opportunity to try some new things, which led to the development of this pilot program. In the past few years, the library had prior positive experiences with embedded librarianship and wanted to see if it could be done on a larger scale. The term embedded librarian can have a number of different connotations, probably the most broad definition being a librarian who partners with a team outside of the library walls. For the case of this presentation, an embedded librarian is a librarian who has been integrated into a course, both physically by going to various class sessions and virtually by being enrolled in the D2L course site. 
The Embedded Librarian provides support to students in their research process via discussion boards, posting content to the D2L course site, and physically visiting the class. The intent was to increase librarian participation beyond a one-shot instruction session, help students overcome library and research anxiety, and build strong librarian-faculty relationships. The library has also been working to more fully utilize the potential of D2L and digital learning objects. Developing a SCORM package would provide an ideal way to move beyond the late adopter stage and demonstrate the positive benefit e-learning has on making teaching and learning more improved and efficient. Finally, in the current culture of assessment, it is becoming more and more important that departments and programs, programs can demonstrate that what they are doing is impacting students in a positive, measurable way. Gathering this type of data will help us not just do things better, but do better things. Utilizing the SCORM package allows for improved data collection and tracking, which could then be used for assessment purposes and program improvement. Previously, the library has built digital learning objects, but these are often difficult to assess as they are on the open web and while one can track usage and time spent, the data is anonymous and it is difficult to tell who on campus is using the tool and even if those using the tool are from your own campus. Utilizing a SCORM package in each D2L course would allow the tracking of all students submitted data from that module, allowing a librarian to see what was working and what wasn't at the class level. The pilot program involved new TAs who were required to participate in this program. This amounted to 12 of the 51 instructors and included 27 of the 81 sections, as most instructors taught at least two sections. On the library side, librarians were given the choice of participating in the pilot and utilizing the SCORM package, or working with an instructor who preferred a one-shot instruction session. Out of 11 librarians, seven chose to participate in the pilot. All librarians were added to the D2L courses of their assigned instructors, and while most created discussion forums where students could ask research questions and added library research modules with links to research resources, tutorials, and other help documentation in the D2L course site, only those participating in the pilot added the SCORM package to their course's D2L site. A team of librarians worked with myself to develop the Introduction to Academic Library Research SCORM package using Articulate Storyline. The package used two short videos to provide an overview of library research and a demonstration of the database Academic Search Complete. There was also an area where students submitted their research topic, as well as one source related to the topic that they found while searching Academic Search Complete. Librarians loaded the SCORM package into the D2L course they were embedded in. Instructors were encur encouraged students to complete the SCORM package before the information literacy session but it was not required and only a few faculty awarded bonus participation points if students completed the package. Now I will walk you through some screenshots, first showing you the Articulate Storyline interface, then demonstrating how the SCORM package worked in D2L and how the submitted student data could be viewed. I'll begin with a brief overview of the Articulate Storyline interface. The middle section of the interface is your workspace, where you add images, texts, and other information. The lower section includes the Layers panel, which is similar to programs such as Flash and Photoshop. You can also access the States tab from here, which allows you to easily create different states for items. For example, if you wanted to make a visited link a different color or have a hover effect for an image or piece of text, you would do it through the States tab. The top toolbar includes options for adding images, shapes, hotspots, videos, and built-in illustrated characters. The Triggers panel on the right side of the screen allows you to easily assign actions to items. For example, you would use this panel to create a link to a URL or another slide. You can even add JavaScript to items for more advanced interactions. The Preview button allows you to view the complete project or just the current slide. This is also where you can export your project to the web or to an LMS. 
Storyline also supports exporting projects to HTML5 for use on mobile or non-Flash supported devices. The exported SCORM package can easily be added to D2L via the Import Export Copy tool. Once imported, the package will show up as its own module in the content area. Clicking the link in the content area, students will see the package as shown. By clicking More Actions, students have access to an Open in New Window link, which opens the SCORM package in a new window. The notepads at right link to the contents of the package. Research for Expository Writing is a brief video scribe video explaining the appropriate sources one should consider using for their paper and why. Why Use Library Databases provides some brief text explaining why one should use library databases instead of a web search. How to Use Academic Search Complete is a brief screencast demonstrating how to do a topic search in Academic Search Complete. The last note leads to the interactive portion of the package where students submit a topic in a source article. Students can also click the Ask a Librarian link at the top to get an IM chat window and talk with the librarian. In the interactive portion of the SCORM package, students are asked to choose a topic and write a few keywords they would use to search for information on that topic. Links on the page take students to short tutorials on how to narrow a broad research topic and how to choose appropriate keywords. After adding the information in the text field, the student clicks Submit to move to the next screen. The second form field asks students to search for an article related to their topic and type in the article title, journal title, and publication year. Again, students click Submit to move to the final screen. With the tutorial complete, the student's data is saved in D2L. To view SCORM reports, go to the content page, click Table of Contents, then click View Reports under the Related Tools drop-down. Next, hit SCORM Reports at the top of the page to get to the screen shown on this page. This page provides a brief overview of how many students attempted and completed the tutorial and the average time spent on it. Under the Actions table heading, there are three icons that provide more detailed information. The first graph-looking icon provides a summary of interaction by students. For example, progress attempts, time spent, average time spent, and last, ti last time accessed. The last icon that has a double white arrow on a blue background allows you to see the student's submitted data. This screenshot shows the summary of interaction by students, showing you the following information progress, attempts, time spent, average time spent, and last access. Here you can view all of the students submitted data for all students who have completed the SCORM package. Note that there isn't an easy way to get this SCORM data out. There isn't an export to CSV option. We had to end up copying and pasting the tabular data into Excel which led to some data formatting errors that needed to be manually corrected. So what did we learn? 24 out of 27 sections utilized the SCORM package. Due to miscommunication between the professor and librarian, three sections did not have the package assigned by the instructor. In those 24 sections, there were 437 students which averages out to about 18 students per section. 318 students attempted the package, a 72% participation rate, a high participation rate for an assignment that did not have a point value assigned to it. 163 out of the 318 students who attempted the package completed it for a 51% completion rate. What does completed the package mean? It meant that a student submitted data to both fields in the package. In some cases, students only submitted data in one of the fields or viewed the videos in the package but did not submit any form data. 
The sections with the lowest and highest average time spent on the package was 14 seconds and 42 minutes respectively. Usage tracking in D2L is not an exact science since once a student opens a file, it starts the timer and the timer only ends when the window is closed. So it is possible the student opened the activity, went and did something else, and then came back to it. Due to our focus on ensuring the SCORM package was built, tested, and deployed in time, there weren't any questions on the program survey for students or instructors specifically about the SCORM package. However, through debriefs with some students and faculty, the following anecdotal data came to light. The embedded experience can be varied depending on a number of factors. How well your relationship is with the instructor appears to be the driving factor. Some librarians came to multiple class sessions across all three units. Others had little interaction with their instructor outside of the information literacy session, despite reaching out multiple times to their assigned instructors. The SCORM package data allowed librarians to personalize their sessions. For example, one librarian used student submitted topics for the sample searches she demoed in the information literacy session. The data also provided an opportunity for the librarian to get a sense of where the students were at and tailor the session based on that information. For example, perhaps students were really good at developing topics, but not so much so on locating appropriate scholarly resources. The librarian could make it a point to focus on source selection and evaluating, evaluating them during this session. Instructors could benefit too, as they could see if a particular student was struggling based on the answers submitted, and perhaps take the opportunity to be proactive and discuss with the student how the assignment was going and if additional assistance was needed. Accessing submitted SCORM data can be a bit of a Rube Goldbergian process. While one can view the data inside D2L, it would be nice if it could be easily exported to a CSV file, so it could be better stored and managed. It would also be helpful if it could be tied to a grade item, so if a student completes the activity, it automatically is reflected in the gradebook. Moving forward, we hope to get IRB approval to gather this data and use it for further research and analysis. The librarians who participated in the pilot felt the workload of being an embedded librarian in multiple sections was manageable. We hope to explore the possibility of scaling the embedded experience and use of the SCORM package to more sections in the future, especially if the SCORM package can become part of a graded assignment. As mentioned, extracting SCORM data from D2L is challenging. It would be helpful if D2L could make exporting this data easier. Also, D2L adding support of the TinCan API would be helpful as well as it would allow for more data to be tracked and allow the usage of the Articulate mobile app on iPad and other mobile devices, which would allow for the full functionality of the SCORM package to be experienced. This concludes the presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to inbox me at the address below.